So while editing it, I realized I explained way too long. So if you're only interested in knowing this cast condition, feel free to jump to this time mark. I also have some chapters below. Feel free to jump around. In short, this is a truck Eric wanted, but I got a little faster than he was able to get around to click that buy now button. So for now, this truck act as a filler before my actual plan gets rolled down the production line. I got this truck, but knowing that he wanted it eventually, so the Hilux stays in the family no matter what. Behind me is a 2005 Toyota Hilux that we just imported to Canada. Well, technically, we bought it online without seeing in person with very limited amount of information given. How did we get here, you might be asking. Well, let me take you back to the very beginning. If you are new to my channel, hello and welcome. My name is Monique. I mostly post mostly solo trips to remote places in my Toyota Land Cruiser 100 series, also in 2005. I brought that car back from Australia after touring around the whole country for a year. Then COVID hit, so we were kind of stuck in Canada and while traveling around the places that we were allowed to as the provinces and borders got to open up. The last trip we did, we, me and the vehicle and you guys, the last trip we did was up to the Arctic where, to put it lightly, I joined Roller Road Club. So the Land Cruiser is no longer um, the past couple months, sort of I've been taking time, uh, taking everything apart, dealing with it. If you want to know more about detail of why I was doing all that, chopping it apart, um, there's a reason behind it. I might put a video up here somewhere. But yeah, that's basically the background about the parts, the vehicle, and why I was in a position to look for what's next. A few months later, a tow truck showed up with this 2005 N70 Toyota Hilux. 5-speed manual turbo diesel with a solid axle swap using 80 series Land Cruiser differentials. Without knowing much about it other than the limited information online, we got ourselves a right-hand drive truck without heat. Do you know cars from certain parts of the world don't come standard with heat? Or at least AC blows code. It is uh, just arrived from Thailand. And uh, yeah, we'll go through it a little bit. <laughs> uh, kind of one of those things where... Where do you start? Yeah. There's so many. Okay, we will start from the front. It's got sort of like a knockoff ARB style front bumper. I don't know the rigidity of these things because it seems like it's very thin metal. Check this out. I can move it by hand. And if you've installed an ARB bumper, you know you should leave a, a like one centimeter sort of gap to allow movement with the body. And now we are obviously not allowing that to happen. So once it flex, and then I know it's a knockoff, but like, what the hell is this? You're not even completing your whole piece together. Say if I just have a picture of what an ARB or Iron Man Boa will look like and then give it to my buddy that's not even a certified welder or fabricator and I'd be like, can you make this for me? I'll bring you beer and then that's, that's, what's, that's what's happening. See like right now I just saw another gap that's not welded together. Like all those two. I think this is made by a company like that makes these in, in Thailand. Made like, by a company you think? Yeah, yeah. I think they pump these things out but they're... By a company. They're just super thin. That's all it is. They're cheap, they're thin. They probably cost like two or 300 bucks. Yeah, like... All right, so you know, a lot of right-hand drive imports, they have this little mirror thing on the passenger side. It seems like they painted the face beforehand. This mirror, it's still taped up. There's still a little bit of tape residue here, but 
not big of a deal. I just don't get why you will paint that, but not paint this. Up in the front, we got a winch that, whatever this brand is, Top Speed, but it's got like a worn winch kind of <laughs> logo, W shape. And what happened here? This whole winch fair lead is tilting downwards and that's bulging out. And then that went, that went and it probably hit something. And then the rear bumper is um, rusting out from sort of the inside. It might have a hoop that comes here along the fender and goes connects there. Whatever happened to that? Like sort of similar idea as the hoop in the front, uh, the fender brushes. This is the first bracket of the side step. I don't get why you would do things like that. Same thing on the other side. Really, really hokey. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it looks like they extended each one of them out about an inch. It almost looks like they just added angle iron or something onto that. So when I just placed the order on the website, the picture of the truck actually had a rack and a rooftop tent on top. And after I placed the order, when we were preparing all the documents and stuff, the photo updated and the rack and rooftop tent are gone. And then the wheels sort of changed too. I guess, okay, understand no big deal it's fine uh, still sort of a little bit misleading you know like it didn't say much in the sales app to begin with but what they've changed to is a uh, kind of standard back rack thing at least can you like put two matching bolts they're not even the same threads coming up it's like a split second i wasn't looking <laughs> he took the bet liner out so they drilled like a bunch of fucked up holes in the top rail they drilled holes in the rail to mount the... The tent that was there before, do you remember? Oh, yeah. They didn't defer it? <sighs> no, the in... Like, does it look like they deburred it? They obviously did defer it. The, the inside <laughs> caught, caught, like, a second layer underneath. You can't really see, but, like, there's some really sharp pieces under there. I mean, you should always debur your holes, no? At least trade school taught it, so. As you can see, it is sitting on... 80 series solid axles instead of IFS. It's good that they reverse these. These are usually these are usually back backwards coming from um, lower, and that's a huge chunk of clearance missing. So that's I guess a smart move. But check this out. The only bad part about the swap is probably the way they did the transmission cross member. It's rolled in here, so I can show you. Here you see it's already cracking. And then on top, it, it's not even welded on top there. And then here it's cracking. Seems like they repainted the whole transfer case transmission. Um, good thing is stainless steel exhaust all around, but there's no muffler. We might need to deal with that. See, the grease is coming out from that side. So we might need to deal with that too. Maybe we'll just do all of them, all four. Rear looks okay, nothing's leaking. If you can see, yeah, the bushings in there. Yeah, the bushings They're pretty done. Perished. <laughs> Since the rear is still on leaves, they just made this kind of like a spacer thing for the mount to be that high. So I guess you could say it's lifted from here to there that much. This truck's probably been lifted six to eight inches. It's still only six, eight, so it should fit in a parking garage and stuff like that. It's just under 80 inches. Without a roof rack. Okay, so this truck has 80 series axles under it. Done a pretty good job of getting them to fit under this. When we initially bought the truck, didn't have a parking brake cable by the looks of it in the pictures. Now it uh, has shown up and it has one. It's a little hokey. We're going to have to do a little bit of work on it to get to work properly. It's missing some of the linkages and stuff, but we've sourced those. It doesn't have a diff breather on it, but we've sourced that. So yeah, this truck doesn't have an e-brake, or at least it did not have a functioning e-brake when we first looked at it because of the axle swap. So what they did, or what they were using for a long time, was this right here which is almost like a line lock like you'd see on like a drag car which would normally lock the front wheels 
this locks the back wheels. So you push down on the brakes, put it like that, and now the pressure is held in. This comes off of the port on the brake master that goes to the back brakes. And then this goes out to the T that goes to each one of the rear wheels. It's a very interesting setup. You can probably get rid of it because it looks like it's leaking a little bit here. Yeah, so this truck being sold in Thailand originally does not have a heater core. Doesn't even have the spot for the heater core to go inside the HVAC assembly in the dash. So the whole dashboard is going to come out. We've got all the piping, the hoses, the controls, everything to uh, give this truck heat because we're going to need it, obviously. We might want to do a video on this while getting hard heat figured out, but for now I can show you this. Instead of having, you know, AC knob, you turn from red to blue, from heat to AC. This one does have blue all around. How cold do you want it? I guess you just have cold and very cold and freezing cold. The AC works though. AC works? Yeah. I mean, I would hope so. <laughs> Feels pretty cold now. Yeah. And it's only getting colder. Okay, since the front light, the headlight, uh, came pretty hazy and we already got the part from EP Motors. Um, we are going to just change them, pop them in right now. Eric said it's going to take 30 minutes, so we shall see. Okay, so this wire came from that light that I just took out. Look at how it's connected. Look at the twist. A few strand left hanging there. I don't know if you can trust that. So new, wow. That does look a lot better. So shiny. Not bad, that took 30 seconds. Normally, um, the Hilexes, they don't, they don't come with gas struts in the front uh, bonnet hood, but this guy, the previous owner, added two struts. Normally you would just have this standard thing to hold it after you lift the the bonnet up manually, but I don't think anyone is able to reach there now that it's lifted so high, at least not me. So that's kind of just become obsolete. Um, yeah, I guess just throw it away. <laughs> okay, so one thing we need to one thing we need to do with the truck in order to have it passed inspection here is we need to give it a daytime running light. Um, it's sort of a North American, or maybe even Canada, North American specific thing that you need to have some sort of light running during the daytime and it's not standard in other parts of the world. Um, my Lanku said when I came in we need to wire something up too. So this one doesn't have it either. I bought this kit from Canadian Tire and uh, wired it in. Okay, another thing that we need to do to make it past the inspection is to take the tint out. That's not really legal here. Yeah. Sticky. <laughs> That's gonna be fun to remove. Hmm. Oh, it's two layers. Two layers. We actually just got back from inspection and on our way back we had to call a tow truck. I've had my Jeep for several years and they're known for having death wobble. I never had a death wobble in my JK. However, in this Hilux, this was my first time experiencing it. It's freaking scary. Death wobbled so bad, it eventually shift the steering wheel to like almost this angle when you had to go straight. So we pulled over to the side of the road and found out that the wall shook, the pan hot bracket cracked like this. So like, yeah, the death wobble cracked that. Well, the pan hard bushings are completely wrecked. Um, and the bracket for the panhard mount isn't welded on the top side. And I was just talking to Mike and Mike was saying, you know, that plus the bracket not being welded on the top allows it to flex probably more than it should as well. And then it's sort of just like a perfect storm from there. 
Plus then you have these really, really heavy wheels that just amplify that through the tire and then it's just, yeah, not good. It's just a perfect storm of shit. <laughs> right now, just called BZA again, trying to get it towed home. Yeah. And this is why you should always have a roadside assistant membership with I have BCA. That's what we have in BC. BCA, come on! Yeah, hey, three. Turn! Oh my god! Woo! On a Hilux. Yeah. <laughs> Not common. Using it once, you get your money back already. Welcome to the highway. Woo! <laughs> And because of COVID right now, they don't either don't take passenger or they can only take one passenger. So luckily we were able to have our friends coming to pick us up. Okay, and our friend John is there too to pick us up. <laughs> so obviously there's still a lot to do on this truck. A lot of things that's above my pay grade. I don't know how long it's going to take us to bring this truck to a drivable conditions that at least we feel safe to take it on a farther journey um more tinkering i guess on that note in search for what initiated the wobble we look into the driver axle remember the leaky greasy knuckle we got the hub out and what a jam we found here's a quick recap the C-clip that holds axle shaft was not installed properly, allowing axle shaft to move around and damage the bearings, spindle, and axle seal. Lock washer for wheel bearing was damaged, allowing wheel bearings to become loose. Inside a housing, where supposed to only have grease, was flowing out oil and grease mixture, along with metal shavings. Oh, you go. That's your CV. <laughs> I tried looking into warranty on the website I bought it from. The stringent rules requires reporting within 48 hours without taking the car apart. Makes it essentially impossible to claim anything. So I'm not going to name which site I used, just so you're aware the risk coming from buying anything online. And then this is... Uh, look. That's where it's supposed to ride. This is what you get, buying a car online without seeing in person. I mean, we were sort of expecting things not be perfect, but this is kind of far beyond it. Sure, it looks cool, but having a reliable functioning truck out in the wild, it's so much more than being cool. If you have any recommendation, feel free to leave a comment below. I really need some help right now. <laughs> Storage compartment, you got a normal glove box, and I didn't know you have a little thing on top too. No passenger side airbag. Oh yeah, obviously. You don't get airbags with that, but what's more important, right? <laughs> Storage? Storage. Storage is always key. <laughs>